This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1554, Five Retirement Questions You Need to Ask, by Scott Spann with FinancialFinesse.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I narrate posts from your favorite personal finance bloggers, with their permission, of course. It's as if these authors all wrote these amazing songs and I get to perform the covers. For now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Five Retirement Questions You Need to Ask by Scott Spann with FinancialFinesse.com. When do you plan on retiring? When I ask this question during financial wellness workshops and webinars, I find that most people have at least a ballpark idea of when they'd like to have the freedom to quit work. In fact, some people completely light up with a lightning fast response of yesterday, today, or tomorrow when I ask about that desired retirement date. For most of us, retirement is a top financial priority, and there can be a difference between desired retirement dates and the actual realistic target date for retirement. Regardless of what your vision of the ideal retirement may look like, here are five basic questions that should be at the heart of all retirement planning activities. Number one, what do you look forward to the most during retirement? This is a question that helps us frame what our desired retirement actually looks like. Unfortunately, I've worked with too many people who didn't take the time to really think deeply enough about this important question. If you're like me and retirement seems too far away to envision clearly, just think about the things that you currently enjoy spending your time doing, but would love the opportunity to devote more of your time and resources towards. Try to go beyond basic answers here and be as specific as possible. Think SMART goals. How often do you plan on traveling? Where do you plan on living? Will you be taking on new hobbies or recreational activities that have some expenses associated with them? Will you be spoiling the heck out of your grandchildren and want to have some extra money for them? Number two, how long will my retirement last? This question is simply a pure assumption of how long you plan on living. It isn't always the easiest question to address, but the reality is that life expectancy plays a major role in our retirement planning projections. The longer we live, the greater the costs of retirement. An average couple retiring at age 65 has a greater than 50% chance that one person will live beyond 90. Before you can estimate how many years you'll spend in retirement, you obviously need to figure out when you wanna retire. If you're just not quite sure the age that works best for you or your retirement date is a moving target, you can use a few different retirement scenarios to compare your options for each realistic retirement date. I always suggest using a realistic but optimistic life expectancy, but personalize your assumptions based on your own health and wellness history, as well as your family's history of longevity. Number three, how much will retirement cost? The best approach is to start anticipating whether you plan on simply trying to maintain your existing standard of living or not. For anyone within five years of retirement, an actual budget plan for retirement becomes more important. Otherwise, the general rule of thumb is to start with around a 70 to 80% income replacement goal and adjust this up or down depending on if you wanna live a more active or conservative lifestyle. That's because research studies suggest that retiree expenses on average are typically between 70 to 90% of pre-retirement income. Just keep in mind this number is merely a ballpark estimate and reviewing your current and future budget is a more reliable method. A variety of other factors such as your planned lifestyle expenses, future inflation rates, healthcare costs, and whether or not you'll have mortgages and other debt paid off impact the total price tag of your retirement. Number four, how much will I need to save to reach my retirement goals? In order to replace about 80% of your pre-retirement income, you will generally need to save about 10 to 15% of income throughout your working years. But if you're early in your career or focusing on paying off high interest consumer debt, at least try to contribute up to your employer's matching contribution if one's provided. Otherwise, run a basic retirement calculation to assess your actual target savings amount to get you on track. Number five, how much of your retirement nest egg can you afford to spend each year? 
Conventional wisdom among financial planners often relies on a safe withdrawal rate of 4% per year. The rule of 25 is very similar to the safe withdrawal rate. It means that in theory, you need 25 times your first year's additional income needs for your retirement nest egg. For example, if I need an additional 100,000 per year in retirement expenses, not covered by social security, pension, or other income sources, I will need 2.5 million or 25 times 100,000 to reach this income goal. This is a general rule and the term safe withdrawal rate can be misleading. The key is to remain flexible during your early retirement years as the real safe withdrawal rate depends on the sequence of investment returns and inflation rates during the first 10 years of retirement. It is no surprise that retirement planning remains the top financial planning priority for about 70% of American workers. The sad reality is that most people spend more time planning a vacation or major purchase than how they will spend their retirement years or how much it will cost. However, the retirement planning process can be a little less daunting of a task if you simply focus on these five questions. You just listened to the post titled Five Retirement Questions You Need to Ask by Scott Spann with FinancialFinesse.com. Thank you to Gusto. I've shared some of what small business owners have said about them before, but there's actually a lot more. Here are some real people. Tom S. says, Gusto has allowed my small company to offer big time benefits without an HR department. And that's been true for us too, actually. Here on the OLD podcast team, we feel like we have a full-time payroll and HR department that can offer benefits thanks to Gusto. Laura L. says, with Gusto, even my employees are impressed with how easy their new hire paperwork is. Also true for us here. When we switched over to Gusto, I had to do the new hire paperwork. And yes, it was a breeze, super fast, easy, and I didn't need any additional instructions or help. And here's what Brian L says. Gusto is super simple and easy to use. I've used multiple other payroll processes and there's nothing like this out there. And the list goes on. Right now, our listeners get three months free when they go to gusto.com slash OFD. Yep, three months of payroll, benefits admin, and more, totally free. Again, that's gusto.com slash OFD, G-U-S-T-O dot com slash OFD. I can totally understand why many of us avoid thinking about these questions surrounding retirement, especially when we're early in our careers. When I reflect back on the last five to 10 years of my life, it has unfolded in ways that I could have never anticipated or planned for. So the idea of getting clarity on what I will or want to be doing 10, 20, or 30 years from now seems like a daunting task. That being said, I have no idea when I will actually want to retire, but I like the idea of having the option available to me as soon as possible. My strategy has been to create the possibility for retirement, but not be tied to an exact date because this allows for flexibility. Figuring out how much money you'll need in retirement is dependent on how good you are at estimating your expenses in retirement, which can be tricky. Of the people I know who have retired, I've noticed that they have a really intimate understanding of their pre-retirement expenses, and they padded these numbers with worst case scenarios concerning things like healthcare costs. One thing I really enjoy about the FIRE movement, which stands for Financial Independence Retire Early, is the amount of thoughtfulness early retirees put into their budgets for retirement. And because there is typically a larger gap between their income and expenses, fire folks are diligent about the expense side of the equation and their financial modeling focuses on building a nest egg that's 25 times their anticipated yearly expenses. Regarding how much you need to save while you're working towards traditional retirement, 10 to 15% is great if you're getting started in your 20s. But keep in mind that if you're getting started in your 40s or 50s, you'll need to save a much higher percentage of your income, even upwards of 40 to 50%. While that can sound daunting, it absolutely can be done, though will likely come with some drastic lifestyle changes like downsizing your home. While some of these questions regarding retirement might be tough to answer right now, I think they're a great reminder that retirement will be the biggest expense of our lives and we should prioritize saving for it accordingly. And that's another episode of Optimal Finance Daily. Thank you for your support and for listening every day, of course. We wouldn't be here if not for our fantastic listeners and contributing authors. 
Have a great start to your weekend and I'll be back with another new post for you tomorrow, right here where your optimal life awaits.